got our stormtroopers in the game. Or a lot of it, at least. Yeah, they are, yes. They did get down in the grotto, but also just a shambles. Oh my goodness. This is a long delay. <laughs> Same delay as both streams. Chap and AV, no delay. So winning at least the viewership war probably on that <laughs> front so that they could exactly see what's happening. And man, oh man. It looks just a shambles down here, but there is attack at least minis, minis, minis. for scoped and some minis. So things looking good. And so far in the battles to come, scoped and Tifu are gaining the lead. I believe if the same skin, or if Tifu has the same skin as scoped, then the people that actually got down here are neither Chap AV or Tifu and Scope with the big loot with the Brutus minigun and the vault key. There could be a possibility that the person with the vault key was the one that flew out earlier on and escaped. But it seems that everyone is kind of gone right now. There's no one left over. It's a ghost town. Is this really how this is going to play out? Four teams all trying to grief the card at the same time? I mean, if EU was something to kind of learn off of, having Grotto loot can renew the entire game and make high ground that much more deadly. Now that that's not there, that frees up so much room for other teams. And surprised to see them contested again. When they played so well in week three, after not qualifying week two, they played so well, like decently in week number one, never really losing these off spawn fights. Similar to what we saw Wolfies and Lecce, for example, in the EU FNCS lose at the agency. These typically, yes, they might lose one time over the six games, but regardless, they always still perform fairly well out of the rest of the games, if that makes sense. So I'm surprised after all this time that people are still trying to fight against Booga and Stretch. We'll see if there's any other action right now. Chop and Navy going straight back to the grotto. But I think that the vault was actually not open for these guys. It might have been, which is surprising, wondering exactly who got the card and came back. Information we miss out on now, but we have six total games to come back and look at it. This is just game one. If there's anything else happening on the map with any other POIs, Lazy Lake, it'd be cool to see. And it's easier to always come back to water. Ooh, coming back to chat, though, in the grotto. AV has no shows on a 50-50 into a box, and they pick it up. Who's it on? That's oops wrecked. I think we have that POV as well, possibly. But it won't be needed because these guys clinch their loot up, clinch their story. Give us bandage cannon. Med kit? There's one bandage cannon. Another one? And that vault is open for Chap and AV to get the loot. And they have zone position, as Bala said, so their game is definitely online. Yeah, it definitely is, especially with the bandage bazookas that they have, extra minis. Staff uh, Bizzle Cease, but. Acorn Jock, up and comers this season at least to make a good track record that we can watch in squads. And then the West boys coming east, scented and edgy, performing week after week, their only vice kind of being not taking the games too seriously when they end up with too much of a lead. So we'll see if they fix that today, get an even better first place. On our screen though, AV down and out. And it looks like it might have been from the hands of Knight and Rogue Shark, like we were saying. And the pad, actually, from... Okay, no, he's going to place his pad. It's already going to look like the sixth game as we get a Misty Mentos. Lake ending? To give themselves the room that they need going forward. And this time the Mythic Minigun is on a different duo. A duo that performs time and time again. But they're just finding pressure. Nothing's actually connecting into points. It might just right here. Being, being on low ground in this zone as well is going to be difficult, especially if it goes over water, just like that over to the west side. We'll have to move fast, move early, and possibly move up a few layers afterwards. But in doing that, we'll use up so many of their materials. And all hard mats 
on that one. That was very expensive to get across. Almost 200, almost 100 brick and 200 metal for that much. And there's not even fully protected here because that's not their floor up above. And they're going to take that to their advantage, actually. They're going to try to drop them down. No. They opt to go somewhere else. Now onto the wood. Now ahead. So also grabbing the attention because of how their position is on the rest of the lobby. But they can go so much, so straight. And actually, I think that this layer might be okay given that they're right above water. Down, down to the right. Is that guy down to your right? Oh, guys, literally one shot. Guy is down. More tax coming in this trap has to play solo. Nice pyramid placement into a box to slow down people around and possibly get an elimination, but it's not possible. We'll have to come in a little bit later. Does not have the power tools usually does, but does have the position into someone else's tarp. Nice sight line, good replace, good beam, but can he find the finish? He can at a price almost. Jumping back in the zone, finds the bandage, barely stays alive, gets the siphon. And, scope. and that's on scope. Tifu afterwards, he gets both. And now he can move forward, the passion there. Not even worried about getting placement, I think, in this game because he's found the best prize possible in game one. And that's the momentum, that is respect. Man, that must feel good for them. We're starting to, with the heat from that double elimination on the scope and Tifu chat 1v2ing them in end game. Now it's starting to freaking heat up our observer PC and just before placement, but he said it goal accomplished. <laughs> At least win that little battle, that little rivalry that they're we definitely gonna have three. going on. And they have taken out all the three out of four Grotto teams. But regardless, that doesn't really matter because if you're not winning your fight off spawn, oh, it's not goal cool accomplished because this has nothing to do with that off spawn right fight. Right no right egos right in here. Stark and Knights, they're doing what they need to do is getting towards that end game and good materials, good weaponry. And good loadouts. Two elims for them so far, and still climbing in the ranks. A good layer, two plus the minigun, they can make this work. Great synergy as well as they both instantaneously walk back to the zone, no questions asked to pick up a nice elimination. You don't see that too often. Usually there's just one fragger that looks backwards, looks for shots, but as a duo, they're working with pressure in mid ground, box to box with a minigun. Knight going down though, Ooh. a little bit overzealous. Claw getting taken out by a big beam. And now everyone's downstairs in the water zone. Shark has to find a way to stay up, not be in his home territory. He needs to be landed. But now walking box to box, no mats left, has a tactical shotgun, looks down and drops down. This is full commitment, finds edgy. edgy. He goes down, these are big names, more are coming through from the top. The zone actually, I think, bounces back almost. He gets a little bit of a chance to oh. double attack again. Oh my God, Shark, unstoppable. As no matter what gun he's using, he no matter which path he takes, he finds yes. something. And there he no is, way. back in zone, 10 HP. No chance, but he gets a maximum. Stole Panda mid ground, wooden built. We saw a little bit of a POV of what happens ahead of them. And that was Shark and Knight. But right now, that's exactly when Knight went down. This is the POV of the lower portion of the map. We'll check in with Height in just a sec. Clean plays, though, by Stoke. Clutching out by himself, getting a nice elimination. It finally finishes as well. Waffles going down in the feed earlier on, too. Booga's not here for this endgame either. So, seventh place right now. Stoke trying to clutch up as he lost his teammate, Panda. And night zone, we have nine players alive. Mega in the feet, or Mega is there, fighting. There's where Shark made his way up on the side. Stowe had the easy path right over top of the mountain. And that's where Shark died. Saf, possibly alive. He's the one who took out Chap. There it is, Zate in front of Stowe. A big pinch from Saf and Zate, as Zate took the damage, and now it's a one the, oh, Megan Dubs are alive, actually, down on low ground. Furious is the other player. So not so 1v2, Saf versus Mega and Dubs. But Saf has the advantage. He doesn't have to deal with the low ground water. These guys have to be building floors time and time again and covering their roofs. Although they have a lot of utility, no is it possible? The drop down by Saf takes out Dubs, I believe. Now not is this going to be him and Mega? Not yet. He's 1 HP, but so is Saf. He needs just two quick shots. One's on Mega, chooses the wrong duo. They end up holding out. First place, oh, it's actually not going to be them at all. It's going to be Gonzo and Furious RR with 16 total points, Pando and Stoto follow, and then Knight and Shark at third with 14.
Wow. Okay. So these are all elimination-based max placement games from the rest of them. Obviously not Panda and Stowe. 